Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. This is the story of a stretch of highway outside of Knotty Pine called Death's Half Mile. Along this half mile, there are three killers. One is an extremely sharp curve. The second killer is a narrow bridge just around the sharp curve. The third killer is a railroad crossing, where the trains come roaring out of a narrow valley and across the highway. This is the place where, on the average, there are three accidents a week. Let's find out how Bill and his rangers correct this horrible stretch of road in the story, Death's Half Mile. On one side of the highway called Death's Half Mile, mountains drop to the edge of the road, except where a narrow valley opens up. Along this valley runs a small river and a railroad track. On the other side of the road, the ground is fairly level, and there's a ranch. Bruno Allen and his family live there close to the highway in a comfortable home. It's about midnight, and Bruno and his son Eric are sleeping. Hey, hey, Pop, wake up. I heard it, son. You get the first aid kit and I'll call the police. Okay, Pop. Put my jeans and shoes on in a hurry. Good boy. I wonder if this will ever stop. Let's go, son. I'll meet you out front. Operator, this is Bruno Allen. Please notify the state police that there's been another accident on this half mile. My son and I are getting out there to give first aid. Pop, it looks like a hit on collision. How's it look, Sarge? Uh, two men are dead, Bruno. A woman's dying, and Doc's trying hard to save her. The children seem all right. You saved a couple of them with your first aid, Bruno. I sure wish something should be done to stop this butchery. Three accidents a week, Sarge. I know. Is that a ranger car coming in? Yeah, I radioed Bill to come out. Hey, Smitty, tell the other ambulance to back in. The doc's signaling for us. Okay, Sarge. Hey, driver, bring your ambulance in here. Hello, Perry. Bruno. Hi, Bill. How are you, Bill? Hey, this is a nasty one, Sarge. How'd it happen? I don't know, Tanner. Bruno called us. Bruno, you and Eric ought to get a medal for the lives you've saved. We just assumed we didn't have to do this, Stumpy. Yeah, I know what you mean, Sonny. I can see your point quite clear. Eric means what he says, fellas, and he speaks for both of us. Bill, will you and Stumpy and Gray Wolf stop over at the house for coffee? I'd, I'd like to talk to you. Uh, plenty late. Maybe you want sleep. I can't sleep for, for a long while after one of these, Grable. We'll stop by, Bruno. I want to check out the details with Perry, and then we'll be off. Let's go, Sarge. All right, sir. Well, that's the last ambulance. 
Let's go back to the house, fellas. Nothing more we can do here. Yeah, but I reckon you're right there, young feller. The doing should be done before these accidents happen. <laughs> Tasty cup of java, Bruno. It hits the spot. Well, Pop doesn't do bad for a pinch hitter. Uh, Mom's away over to Junction City to visit Aunt Minnie. Uh, Bruno, what's on your mind? Death's half mile, Bill. Something's got to be done about that suicide lane. Yeah, I agree with you. But only half the highway is under my jurisdiction. The half on the mountainside because it's in the National Park and government range territory. Oh, so that's why the Sarge called you, huh, Bill? That's right, Eric. It's a crazy arrangement, but that's where the boundary is, right down the middle of the road. Here, fellas, now, uh, take a look at these figures. I've kept a record of every accident that's happened here for the past six months. This will give you an idea of what I'm talking about. Mm hmm. Look bad. You know, Bruno, you've got a real head on your shoulders. This is a pretty jolting record of what goes on along Death's Half Mile. Thanks for the compliment, Bill, but that's what they all said. Hmm? I don't understand. Mm, that's plenty strange remark to make. Well, Pop's talking about the highway commissioner, the captain of the state police, and the superintendent of the railroad. They gave Pop a pat on the back, and, and that was the end of it. Yeah, did you go and see these fellas? No, Stumpy, I wrote to them. I gave them the facts, and all I got in return was a thank you. Said they'd look into it. Well, nothing's ever come of it. I don't think they care how many people get killed on the highway. Eric, don't talk like that. You don't know the facts, so don't make any harsh statements. Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. Will you see what you can do with the powers that be, Bill? Maybe they'll listen to you. Yeah, they sure will, Sonny. Bill has a way of making anybody listen. Oh, you speak plenty of truth, Stumpy. <laughs> flattery will get you nowhere, fellas. It ain't flattery, young feller. It's the plain truth. Bill, please, will you help my pop? Okay, Eric. I'll help your dad. Oh, swell. Oh, oh good thanks, that, Bill. I know if they won't listen to you, they won't listen to anybody. I'm not making any promises, Bruno, but I'll give it a try. By the time Bill's through with these fellas, they'll be willing to listen. Mark my words. Seeing that accident kind of makes a fella think about how dangerous an automobile is, don't it, fellas? Ah, uh, you say plenty that time, Stumpy. Car like loaded gun. You can imagine what Bruno and Eric go through each time there is an accident. They're the first ones there. It's bad to hear hurt people cry for help and find bodies laying on the highway. How you plan to help Bruno, Bill? First thing I'm going to do, Grey Wolf, is go back out in the morning and take a real hard look at Death's Half Mile. <laughs> Pull off plenty far on shoulder, Bill, so car not in way. That's a good idea, Grey Wolf. Leave the red light flashing so it'll slow down oncoming cars. We don't want to be part of an accident. You can say that again, young fella. Ah, there's a curve ahead. Very bad turn. Yeah, sure is. It's like a hairpin almost. There's only one sign. All it says is curve ahead. More warning signs needed for this curve and speed limit sign, too. That's right, Grey Wolf. You've hit the nail on the head. I think there should be a really large sign about here, and it should have reflectors on it so it can be plainly seen at night. And then another sign showing what kind of curve this is, and also a speed limit sign ahead. Maybe a high concrete ridge in the middle of the road would keep the fellers in one lane out of the other. That's an excellent idea, old-timer. You should be a safety engineer. Let's walk around the curve and take a look at the bridge. Ah, that death trap number two. That bridge ain't wide enough for a bad elephant to get through. Ah, it's strange that four-lane highway become two-lane, that bridge. That's right, Grey Wolf. It happens that way frequently. 
can't say that there aren't any narrow bridge warning signs, nor are the abutments striped with black and white paint. Maybe reflectors help show bridge structure, too. Yeah, I believe they would. Boy, a fella don't have much of a chance. You come around that curve and right at this skinny bridge. If one don't get you, the other one will. Let's take a look at death trap number three. Well, here it is, fellas. A perfect setup for an accident. Ah, a train come roaring out of valley and sound is muffled by narrow valley walls. Yep, pitch on you like a fuming dragon before you know where it come from. Uh, here come one now, Bill. Uh, that'll be the Fireball Express. Uh, Gray Wolf, get on the other side and stop any cars. Ah, uh, I hurry. Hey, look at that monster come roaring, would you? Sure was deceptive. To a motorist, it's even more so. It should be wigwag signals here with blinking lights. Yeah, if you said it, Sonny. Them there wooden cross arms don't tell you nothing, except that there's a railroad track here. Most folks probably think that this is some backwoods line. They don't realize that some of the fastest trains in the country fly through here full oh, blast. That fellow scoot through here like arrow. Need more warning. That's right, Grey Wolf. Well, fellas, I've seen enough. Let's go back to headquarters, and I'll write up my recommendations. What do you plan to do, Bill? The first thing I'm going to do is show them to the State Highway Commissioner. You finish writing recommendations, Bill? Yes, Grey Wolf, I have. There we are, all five pages of them. You writing a book, Sonny? <laughs> Not quite, Stumpy, but I haven't left anything out. Uh, you go to Canyon City now. Yes, Grey Wolf. I'll be back early this evening. You're walking into a lion's den, Sonny. I understand the highway commissioner's about as ornery as a grizzly coming out of hibernation. <laughs> I'll feed him these recommendations and see how he acts. Bill, this is a very impressive write-up. I say that seriously. Originally, I thought that Bruno Allen was stretching a point or two, but... Words I... can only describe half the truth, Commissioner. Yes, I'm beginning to realize that. Now that you've stepped into the picture, I know this is serious. And you don't spend your time on nonsense. I don't mean to be caustic, Commissioner, but this flower-throwing isn't solving the problem or answering the questions you've read in my write-up. Yeah, I know that, Bill. I really wasn't trying to avoid the issue. All the compliments are true and deserving. However, I was paving the way for the bad news. Bad news? Yes. There isn't enough money in my budget to follow your recommendations. Not even to put in the signs I've asked for? I'm afraid not. But why? I don't understand. Bill, see those drawings on the wall? Yeah. They're the three super highways the state's building, aren't they? Yes, Bill. They are. They've taken every red cent we can scrape together. I see. I thought the highways were financed with bond issues. Well, they are, but the money, the bond money keeps coming in and dribbles and well, it's all soaked up like rain on dry ground. You can't set aside enough money to take care of death's half mile? The construction men have to be paid. So do our material bills. I'm sorry, Bill, but there's not a thing I can do for you now. Folks will just have to drive more carefully when they travel that stretch of road. That's the whole story, Mr. Scanlon. And the facts you have before you in black and white. Yes, Mr. Jefferson, I've been looking at them. And I must say, you've got a strong case here. Well, thank you. I think you'll find that all the statements I've made can be checked out and found to be accurate. Without a doubt, Mr. Jefferson, without a doubt. But there's more than just these facts to consider. Oh? 
Mr. Jefferson, if we were to put wigwag signals and flashing warning lights at every country road crossing, this railroad would go broke first thing in the morning. But that isn't what I'm asking, Mr. Scanlon. I can understand your problem, and I think you're right. However, I'm not asking this for every country road crossing. This crossing is definitely a hazard crossing and needs attention badly. I'm sorry, Mr. Jefferson, but I can't agree with you. If we do this for you, then every crossing will have to be treated the same way. We'll set a precedent, and our company can't afford to do that. Is that your final word, Mr. Scanlon? Yes, I'm afraid it is. The drivers will just have to be more careful. Honestly, Bill, I, I appreciate what you're trying to do. But I can't see how more frequent patrolling will stop the slaughter on that stretch of road. It won't stop it, Captain Paulson, but I know it'll reduce it. Your men can hail down fast drivers and warn them of the waiting traps. Yeah, you, you do have a point there, Bill. But there's one hitch in it. What's that, Captain? I don't have the extra men to do the job. My force is understaffed. Why, we need 30 more men. And there's no possibility of getting the extra patrols? Sorry, Bill. I just can't do it now. I can't even make the required patrols right now. Tell you what, though. Yes? 50 men will be graduated from police school at the end of the year. And I'll put the extra men on patrol duty around death's half mile. Well, that'll be fine, but it doesn't solve the problem right now, Captain. I know that, Bill. But there's nothing I can do about it. Well, young fella, you're licked now, ain't you? Not yet, Stumpy. Bill, you never learn when you're beat. What plan you have now? I'm going to try an experiment for a week. An experiment? We're going to do our own patrolling. Stumpy... Go out to the garage and get another patrol car. Okay, Sonny. You're up to something. I've got a feeling it's going to be good. I'll get the car ready. What idea you have, Bill? We're going to see if we can't cut down the accident rate on death's half mile for one week, Gray Wolf. Ah, uh, you pick up more rangers for a job. Not for the daylight hours, Gray Wolf. I'll put two men at each end of death's half mile for the night watch. Won't be so lonesome that way, and one can sleep while the other stands guard and changes off. Let's go. This is your spot, old timer. Yeah, it's fine. This is a right nice place to stand guard. How are we going to work this, Sonny? I want you to stop every car. Warn them about the dangers ahead and tell them to reduce speed and then let them go on. Say, that's easy as falling off a log. Okay, Stumpy. All hands will stand eight-hour watches, including myself. I'll take the first night watch. Tom will probably relieve Grey Wolf. I'll bring two more of the boys out to keep us company at night. Okay, Bill. Sounds good to me. Oh, it sounds good to me, too, Bill. I think we'll cut down the accident toll to nothing for the next week. Let's go to our station, Grey Wolf. See you later, Stumpy. Uh, yell loud if you get lonesome, and I yell back. <laughs> It'll be easier to talk to myself and yell for a mile. <laughs> uh, here come car now, Bill. Let's stop them and give them a helpful warning that'll save their lives. What you looking for, Rangers? Bandit? No, we're not looking for anyone in particular, mister. Oh? Why the roadblock, then? To save your life and the lives of the people in your car. The next half mile of highway is called Death's Half Mile. It is? How come? There's a railroad crossing over tracks that carry fast trains... Then there's a narrow bridge and a nasty curve. Go ahead now, but drive slowly and carefully. Thanks for the warning, Ranger. I don't want to be caught napping. You're welcome, mister. Now go ahead. I have a feeling inside, Bill. 
That fellow appreciate our warning. That's right, Gray Wolf. Nobody wants to have an auto accident. That is, nobody in his right mind. Uh, here come three cars now. You take care of them, Gray Wolf. I'm going to walk over and talk to Stumpy. I'm beginning to get another idea. <laughs> Many thanks, Rangers. I've heard about this place, but I didn't know exactly where it was. That's what I'm here for, Sonny. Now go ahead and take it easy. How are things going, old friend? Yeah, right smart, Sonny. All the drivers are thankful I stopped him and told him what's ahead. That's fine, Stumpy. I'm going over and have a talk with Bruno and Eric now. What's up? What do you mean, what's up? I can tell by the pleased-with-yourself look you have on your face that your brain cells are turning over full speed. Well, I was just thinking. Yeah, that's when things start happening. (laughs) Half of this terrible piece of road is ours, Stumpy. Why can't we put a sign up at each end on our half of the highway? Now, you're cooking with gas, sonny. Make it big enough so even an owl can read it in the daytime. Bruno, you sure are a handy fella to have around. <laughs> and so are you, Bill. Eric and I have been getting some wonderful sleep since you got your men out on the highway. Man, it sure has been peaceful around here, Phil. I used to shudder every time I heard a car go by. I can understand how you feel, Eric. I'll have these signs finished in a couple of hours, Phil. Okay. I'll go back to the highway. You bring them out when they're ready? Sure will. When folks read these, they ought to stop and think. Those are right smart signs, Bill. They ought to do the trick. I don't think they'll correct the difficulties here, but they may make drivers stop and think. And then slow down, huh, Bill? I hope so, Eric. There you are, fellas. Both signs are up. Ah, plenty of good job. Boy, that hits right between the eyes. Are you next? This is Death's Half Mile. Drive carefully. That ought to stop them. I think you've licked the problem, Sonny. I'm not through yet. What do you mean, Bill? There are three gentlemen that have to be shown this problem firsthand. What time does the Fireball Express roar through here, Harry? Uh, Five minutes after ten every morning, Bill. And, man, does she go. I have a date with the Fireball Express right here at this crossing at 10.05 in the morning. Hello, Commissioner. This is Bill Jefferson. Yes, Bill. What's on your mind? I'd like you to take a ride with me out to Death's Half Mile in the morning. I don't see that it's necessary for me to do that, Bill. I haven't changed my mind. Would you do it as a favor to me, please? All right, Bill. What time? Be at my office by 9.30. Okay, I'll be there. I'm not asking you to change your mind, Mr. Scanlon. I'm just asking you to take a ride with me. I know you're up to something, but I guess the only way to find out what it is will be to go on that drive with you. Well, what time? Be at my office at 9.30. I'll be there. Well, Captain, what do you say? All right, Bill. What time? Be at my office at 9.30. I'll be there. Bill, I'd like to know what you're up to. So would I, Mr. Scanlon. Well, I've known Bill long enough to be sure we're not going sightseeing. I'm afraid you gentlemen will have to wait for my answer. (laughs) 
We're approaching Death's Half Mile, gentlemen. Oh, a sign. Oh, I wonder who put that up there. Kind of gory, isn't it? Yeah. I put the sign up, and there's one just like it at the other end. Aren't you going to slow down, Bill? There's a hairpin curve ahead, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I don't see any warning. The sign sure. just says curve. Doesn't say anything about it being dangerous. This isn't any well, time for jokes, Mr. Jefferson. Slow down. I'm only going 35 miles an hour, Superintendent. Great Scott, man. Slow down and we'll never make it. <laughs> well, we almost get out of the road. Captain, I'm driving at a safe and sane speed, am I not? Yes, uh, Bill, you are. I see why you brought us. Hey, look out for that bridge. Uh, we're going to... We're never going to make it. Well, to find this thing. well, now we're almost through with that half right. mile, and uh, nothing's happened. Hey, uh, stop at the tracks. The Fireball Express is coming through the valley right now. I don't hear any train, Mr. Scanlon. Well, in the sure. name of common sense, stop. Get us all killed. Frankly, gentlemen, there's no indication that a train's hey, coming. Hey, we'll be perfectly safe. I can hear very well. I heard the whistle, Bill. Stop this car. I'll jump. Well, it seems that I did hear something like a train whistle. Uh, all right, I'll stop. Oh, thank heaven. Boy, am I glad you stopped. We'd all be dead. That's exactly my point, gentlemen. I'm sorry I had to do this, but ordinary appeals didn't do any good. Bruno Allen tried to get you to listen. I tried, and you turned a deaf ear to me also. This was the only thing left. I had to give you this first-hand experience and show you how easy it is to get killed anywhere along Death's Half Mile. I expect you gentlemen to act accordingly. Well, Bruno, Eric, what do you think of Death's Half Mile now? Bill, I can't believe it. There are adequate and proper signs. There's a bumper hump in the middle of the curve and is painted yellow. Yeah, and, and the bridge has been widened to four lanes. You said it, Sonny. There's one of the best ding-dongs at the railroad crossing you ever seen. Uh, also flashing red lights and wig-wag signals. State police patrol more now than ever. Bill, you and your men have done automobile drivers a real service. Well, don't forget, Bruno, you and Eric have done your job well, too. Uh, now we can put another sign up. This is the world's safest half mile. <laughs> Yes, it was a battle, Eric, but now you can put up your new sign. Isn't it strange that we can never learn by other people's experiences? We have to go through them ourselves. That's what I had to do to the superintendent, the commissioner, and the captain of the state police. Well, see you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill! <laughs> This is Stumpy Jenkins, the Ranger Bill's old sidekick, as I guess you all know. Just adding a little extra word of thanks for getting yourself in on the program today. Always glad to have you along. And I hope you invite your friends, too, for we sure got lots of adventures to tell you about. And we don't want you to miss any of them. So you make sure to be there by your radio every week. Don't lose out on our next story. <laughs>